trouble with YouTube, um, ignore the motion blur on the camera, that is normal, I guess, I don't really know, but, um, anyways, uh, you might know that I'm developing a game in Unity called VOAL. Uh, the project has kind of been, uh, discontinued for the foreseeable future. So, uh, no more devlogs for the foreseeable future. Not really much is going to be happening in terms of that game. I have moved my operating system to Linux, and I have not transferred project files over, so the game is kind of discontinued. And I did get kind of far into development. I got AI, maps, all that working. I just never decided to finish the game. And now I don't want to at all. <laughs> um, I mean, I want to finish the game. It's just that I don't really have any motivation to do so. Uh, but I am starting development on a new game calling it Operation Sierra Sandstorm. It's being developed in a good note on the Pop! OS operating system based on Linux. Um, my tutorial about Godot first person movement is on Linux as well, so you can go check out the tutorial if you want to see what Pop!OS looks like. And uh, let's actually get into talking about this new first person shooter I'm developing. Yes, it is a first person shooter. If I try to make a game that isn't a first person shooter, I discontinue it pretty much as soon as I get into development. So if it's not first person shooter, it's gone. But uh, the first question is, what is the genre of this game? I already answered that, it's a first person shooter. The next question is, what time does it take place in? Does it take place in 2020, 1995, Where, when does it take place? Uh, it takes place 2025. <laughs> okay, that might actually be a bad idea because, um, uh, 2020, you, you know what happened in 2020. I, I can ignore this. Um, but anyways, it takes place, well, I would say 2025, so that might be a bad idea. I hope I don't jinx anything. Um, it's about World War Three, Middle East, Russia, United States, third war with each other. Uh, things aren't going too good in this universe. I've written about, I think it's eight or nine missions. The story for eight or nine missions, I can't remember which one it is. But anyways, more story will be coming soon. Um... I can not remember while writing the script. I'm loosely following his script. I don't really know. Um, uh, but the missions are meant to be fairly decently long missions with a lot of stuff happening in each mission. But there will be plenty of checkpoints so you do not have to worry about lost progress. So let's actually get into me developing this game. So the first thing that goes into any first person shooter game is movement. You, you can't really have a first person shooter game without movement of some sort. So I just ripped the movement from the Godot documentation, made my own changes to it, you you know, um, copy paste. I didn't actually copy and paste it though, I typed it up myself based on the documentation. You can see my method from the first person movement tutorial video that I made last week, like precisely last week, because this video will go up at December 30th of, yeah, so at 1.15, so it will be precisely one week apart. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I pretty much just ripped it, and there's nothing really special about this movement system. Um, it's just meant to be a movement system for now. Uh, the next thing that goes into a first-person shooter game is shooting. You can't really have a first-person shooter game without shooting, or otherwise it's just a first-person game. Um, but anyways, I use raycasts. It, it's easier to use raycasts than it is to use projectiles, and uh, the game, the battles in my game are not really going to be long distance enough to conserve physics, so raycasts are the way to go. Um, the way my raycast scripts the way my uh, gun script works is a there's a lot of timer nodes actually involved in the script, and everything is pretty much a node. Very little of it is actually script. Um, so I have a reload timer node, a a shoot delay node, and a shoot cast node. Whenever you shoot, it sets a variable to set 
can shoot to false, so you can no longer just hold it down. It also subtracts ammo from one, starts the shoot timer. Whenever that shoot timer expires, it can shoot again, and that's pretty much it. And we also apply some random rotation on the shoot cast, just for accuracy, I guess. So you're not, your gun isn't just a Death Star, pretty much. I don't know if that's copyright or not. I don't know. Um, anyways, I'm just making reference to it. But uh, anyways, um, reloading. So whenever your ammo gets less than or equal to zero, which it's probably they'll get like to negative one because, um. I'm a bad programmer. Um, whenever it gets less than or equal to zero, um, it will start reload and it just returns everything at the process function so it doesn't receive input or anything. And it starts a timer and while that timer is running, it, nothing can really happen and then once that timer expires, your ammo is set back to your magazine size and then you can shoot once again and your is reloading variable is set back to false so that's actually pretty much it for weapon systems i'm going to move on to ai this is not finished i am warning you uh so don't don't look at the ai code no no, no it's stolen don't don't look at that don't look at the ai code on github um it's bad but uh, anyways I i'm just gonna talk about how i did it so we have a reference to the player. This is normal for any AI script at all. Um, and then we just have multiple variables in me and vision, in me and attack, just you know, normal stuff for AI. And then in the ready function, we set the player, the reference to the player, and then more our vision and attack variables to false, just to prevent the AI from moving to the player's location on start or attacking the player on start. And then in the physics process, we just do some path checks to the player, Garbage. Uh, I'll link to Garbage's video in the description below, I cannot explain it that good. Um, but anyways, in the process function, not the physics process function, but the process function, we check if the player is in the AI vision range. This is normal for any form of AI. And then we, and I forgot to mention that we are using area nodes for vision checks. I will add raycasts in the future for the vision node, just so the AI can't see through walls. I don't want the AI to be a hacker. <laughs> yeah, I don't want the AI to be a hacker. This is going to be a completely unedited video. Besides music, I'm doing some music in it. I'm from the YouTube audio library, but uh, this video is to be unedited. So all this is going in. But anyways, uh, we check if the player is in the AI vision range. If it is, then we move the AI towards the player just by using the Godot pathfinding system. And that's pretty much it. I am doing it on a timer node. It's not actually. So we check in the timer. Once the timer expires, it expires every so often. We check if the player is in the vision radius, and if it is, then we... Move the move the AI towards the player. For some reason, I had a difficult time getting that out. Um, yeah, uh, anyways, uh, this video is a disaster. Um, let me just move on to the outro. I can do outros real good. Um, uh... I want to finish this game for good, I said that about the OL, but I never did. <laughs> the harsh reality, um, and Operation Seer Sandstorm is a lot more unique than VOAL. VOAL was a really generic game, um, there's a lot of sci-fi shooters out there, and I don't like having a generic game, so I'm making my game a modern first-person shooter. <laughs> I feel like it's still kind of generic, but it's not as generic as a sci-fi space shooter with aliens. <laughs> like, hasn't that been done a thousand times? But uh, anyways, the source code for Operation Sierra Sand Sandstorm is on GitHub. Uh, the link to the GitHub page is in the description below. Subscribe to this channel to get not regular updates about when about this game. Uh, 
subscribe to my third channel, which will also be linked in the description below for more regular updates. They're still not really that regular, but they're slightly more regular than this channel here. But subscribe to my third channel for more regular updates. Uh, that is all from me for now. Fun Huber, out. Thanks for watching. I've never done this type of video before where I just talk to the camera. And I'm not really talking to the camera at all. I'm just talking, like, to OBS pretty much. And, like, I'm barely reading the script. See, these videos are more fun when I'm not reading the script at all. Just because I can have, like, jokes while I'm reading the script. I'll just subscribe, I guess. Um... I'm out of ideas for stuff to say now. Uh, this, this script's over, so I have no idea what to say. I usually don't script my videos, so... If, if you like this, subscribe, I guess. I have to say subscribe one more time. Subscribe! Subscribe or I will, uh, delete your code. From, like, your three-hour project, and you're not going like that. Your computers don't crash. I guess, I don't know. Um, I got my microphone. Yeah. Um. And my camera. Out. And my my camera is. Um. My camera's Logitech for some reason. I forgot that. But anyways, thanks for watching. I. I have to stop the video before anything else happens. Um. Sub subscribe, like, comment. But that's all for me for now. Find your bro.